Before we get started, I'd like to make sure that everyone has the following materials ready for today's lesson. For today's activity, every student will need their science book plus uh, a pencil, a ruler, scissors. You can use your science book as the large book. And out of my science box, everyone will get one plastic tube, one wood block, a paper clip, and then there's a hex nut with a long pink twine. It's longer than your desk uh, is to the floor. And a piece of blank paper. So make sure you have a piece of paper. We're going to share the tape, and you can either work in teams or individuals on the pendulum. The lesson today is about energy and simple machines and doing work and using forces. We're going to have basically three different projects going on. Uh, the first project has to do with making a wheel and axle, and the second project has to do with making something called a lever. And then finally, we're going to see if we can apply some of those ideas by making a pendulum to do some work using gravity. So let's get started. First of all, let's take a look in our science workbook uh, on the section on simple machines. On page 54, there are several lessons in here, but I really want you to take a look at this soccer player right here. This soccer player is getting ready to kick this soccer ball. And my question is, is he doing work? And what do you mean when a scientist says work? Like, I worked in the yard this uh, last weekend. Is that work? Well, a scientist, and if you take a look in your book, work. Is kicking a soccer ball work? To a scientist, it is. In science, work means the use of a force to move an object across a distance. In science, work means using a force to move an object across the distance. And if we do that, then in science, we're doing work. Now, simple machines on the next page here, Simple machines consist of, there's about six of them that we're going to talk about, a wheel and axle. And your teachers will, will cover this later with your book. A wedge, which is right here. A lever. An inclined plane, another name for that is ramp. A pulley. And finally, even a screw, like a screw in a light bulb, is a simple machine. So, the word simple machine We've talked about six of those, and you'll study more of them later as you investigate this chapter. Today, we're going to make two simple machines. And as a matter of fact, let's take a look at your worksheet right now. On your worksheet, uh, hopefully you have your name on it. And today's date. And this is grade three, simple machines. Here are some of the vocabulary words that we're going to be talking about. And we've already talked about a few of these. One is work. When I say the word, you say it. Work. Force. Simple machine. And here are some simple machines. Wheel and axle. Inclined plane. A wedge. A lever. A pulley and a screw. And finally, complex machine. When you put two simple machines together, we call that a complex machine. Now, some of the questions today are what are simple machines and what's a complex machine and how does the machine make work easier? One of the others, basically three things I want you to really learn today. They have to do with force, distance, and simple machines. Let's take a look at our definition. Look down on the vocabulary section right here of your worksheet. Work. Here's our definition. Please write this with me. Work is when a force moves an object Work. A force moves an object 
a distance. Go ahead and write that down. A force moves an object a distance. All right, so work is when you use a force to move an object a distance. Key words in there are force and distance. Force and distance. And so what kind of forces are we talking about? One force we're talking about is, can be a push. So a force can be a push or a pull. And I'm going to underline pull because today we're going to use a pull force called, called gravity. We're going to use a push and a pull, but we're going to use a pull force called gravity. So go ahead and write these notes down, please. So we know what work is, using a force to move an object a distance, and we know what force is, either a push or a pull, okay? Push or a pull. Now, work is a force and a distance, and we can have a big force or a little force. And we can have a big distance or a little distance. And so to represent those forces and distance, let's write this right about here uh, next to my vocabulary. I'm going to write a big F. That stands for a big force and a small f. Okay? Those are forces. See how the big capital F stands for a big force and a small f stands for a small force. And the same thing with a capital D. Let's use that symbol for a big distance and a small d for a small distance. Okay? So if I see big F, that means big force. And if I see a small f, small force. Big D, big distance, small d, small distance. And here's the third thing I want you to learn today. A machine makes work easier, not less. A machine, repeat after me, a machine makes work easier, not less. And you're going to understand this when we do our experiments. Let's write that down, okay? A machine makes work easier, not less. And that's very important. A machine makes work easier, not less. Go ahead and write that down. Let's make our first project, shall we? What you'll need is, very simply, a paper clip. And the paper clip is given you looks like this. So we're going to make a drawing of that paper clip that we're going to turn into a wheel and axle. So where it says make a drawing of the paper clip, my paper clip looks like this. It comes down. It goes up. And comes back down on the inside and goes back up. Go ahead and make a drawing of your paper clip. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to carefully unfold the paper clip like this. And straighten it out like this. Okay, and unfold it one more time like this. And unfold it one more time so it looks like this. So it has a long part and a small part. In fact, I'm going to make a drawing of this. So make your paper clip look like this. So it comes down like here and has a long part like that. Okay? Fold your paper clip into this shape right here. All right, so this is going to turn into a wheel and axle. And there's really two ways that we can turn this. We can hold it by the short end and make a big turn like this. 
So hold it by the short end and make a big turn. Now here's my question as you're doing this. Is this a small distance or a big distance I'm turning? And I think you'll see that it is a big distance. So I'm going to make a drawing of that, okay? And I'd like you to make one also. So I'm pulling this out here like this. Here we go. And I'm, and I'm spinning it like that, and it's going around in a circle like that. So there's my drawing. Go ahead and make a drawing. And see how I'm doing this? I'm holding the short end and spinning it like that. Make your drawing of it like that. And I'm going to tell you that this takes a big distance. So I'm going to put a big D right here. A big D. Because it's going in a big distance. But you know what? I can just move this with my finger easily. So it's a small force to move it. Big distance, small force. Big D, small F. See the big distance? Okay. Now, let's make another drawing. This time, let's hold it by the big part. Hold it and move it like this. Now, hold it tight and feel how it's a small distance, but it takes a, squeeze it and it takes a big force. So the drawing will look like this. A long part to hold. Small part like this coming up, and it has a small distance. So I'm going to write small f, but it has a big force to turn it. Small f, big force. As a matter of fact, here's what I'd like you to try get your neighbor, and first have your neighbor hold the short end. Hold the short end. Squeeze it as tight as you can and then see how easy it is to turn it. So you're doing work. You're using a force to move an object. Have your partner hold it as tight as they can and then switch. Then hold the long end and see if your partner and see if you can feel the difference how hard it is to turn. Shorter distance, stronger force. But my question is this. Which one is more work being done? Big distance, little force, small distance, big force. So the work, what about the work? Well, actually, teachers and students, the work is the same. The work is equal. Here we have a big distance, little force. Here we have a, a small force, I'm sorry, a small distance. This is supposed to be a a small distance, small distance, but a big force. Big distance, small distance. Little force, big force. But don't take my word for it. Try it. Try both ways. Holding it tight, big distance, small force. Holding it tight, small distance, big force. Let me give you a, about a minute to explore the two ways to turn the wheel and axle. All right, you can uh, keep this paper clip and uh, show it to your parents or your friends how the work was the same. Less force over a big distance is the same as big force over a small distance. So this is a simple machine, and, and we use wheels and axles a lot uh, everywhere you look, and it's to make the work easier, not less. Easy over a longer distance. Okay, let's take a, take a look at another simple machine. And to do that simple machine, you're going to need three things. You're going to need your science book closed, so you can close your science book. You will need a bar, plastic bar. And you will need a block of wood that we're going to use as a fulcrum. So get those three things ready on your desk. So 
I have on my desk here a lever. And a lever has two parts. It has a bar and a fulcrum, okay? And so using this, I can put the bar underneath my book, and now I can push down and lift my book up. So let's go ahead and try that. See how I put the block by the book and lift it up like this. That's a simple lever. I have a load and I have effort. Effort is when I push on this side and the load goes up. Okay, and see how I have my fulcrum close to the load. Go ahead and try that. Okay, let's make a drawing of what we just did with our, our bar and our fulcrum to make a lever. So mine looked like this. I had my book right here. And that book is called The Load. All right. And then I put my fulcrum, which is a block of wood right here. Okay, so there is my load. Here is my fulcrum. And I put my bar underneath here and stretched it up. And so this is the bar. And I can move this distance down. And this is my effort. So when I push down, the load went up. When I push down, the load went up. Okay? And this was a pretty big distance. That was a big D, but it was a small force. I could use one finger to push it up and down. So go ahead and make your drawing that looks like this. So once again, using my lever, I have a load that goes up and I have effort that goes down. And this is my distance, a big distance, but an easy effort. I'm going to move my fulcrum away from the load right here. So now, here's where it was, big distance, little effort. Now I'm going to move it over here, but I only have a small distance. I only have to travel a small distance. See that? It's only right here. Ding, ding. Whereas before here, I had to go a big distance. Now, I'm keeping the load the same, a book, and let's see if I can push. Oh my goodness, look at that. Now I have to have a big force, even though it's a small distance and it hardly it hardly will lift it. Try it. See the difference. Here is when it's easy to lift, but you have to go a long distance. Here, it's hard to lift, but it's a short distance. I'm going to go ahead and draw that as you try it out. So my first drawing was here the fulcrum was close to the load. So in this drawing, I'm going to do basically the same drawing as my book which is the load. I'm going to keep the load the same. Okay. Here's my load. It's still going to go up. But this time I'm going to move the fulcrum, the block of wood, way back here. Okay. It's still the fulcrum. I'm going to put the bar right here. So there's the bar. And look what happens when I push down again, because I just well, I want to make sure I go down, but that's going to be a small d, but it's going to have to be a big force. So there's your drawing for that one. Different from here, where the fulcrum is close, and here the fulcrum is far away. Go ahead and make your drawing. Can you see the difference between these two? All we did was we changed the fulcrum. Here we have a big distance, small force. Here we have a small distance, big force. What about the work? Did we do less work or more work? No, the work was equal. The work was equal. So from a scientist standpoint, the work was the same. 
just like up above here, the work was the same. Okay? All right, I want to make one more drawing before you write me a sentence of what you learned. Okay, I'm going to turn the, uh, this over. Let's check this out. When I was a kid, I used to build a tree fort. I love this tree fort because, check this out, I had this big tree by my house. It had a big branch coming out, and it, it had nice, nice branches, and it was huge. In fact, it was about, it was about four meters tall for that first branch. Now, four meters, that's a lot, about 12 feet up. And so what I did was I built a tree fort up in here, and the only way I could get up was that I had a rope. And this rope, and I would climb this rope. And it was not easy to climb up that tree. But I would climb up the tree to get to the top of that tree fort. So it took me a lot of force, big force, but the distance was kind of short. Look, I just had to go straight up. I got to thinking, what simple machine could I use? And I thought, you know what? It would be so cool to build a ramp. So I thought about building a ramp. I could nail some boards up, and I made this ramp. The trouble was this ramp now was 20 meters long. But I could just walk right up it. No trouble at all. Ding, 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 ding. Now the question is, this was a small force but a big D. Which one has more work? Which one has more work? If I do a short distance, that takes a lot of effort, or a long distance, that takes less force. And the question is, how much work? And the work is equal. When you use an inclined, this is called an inclined plane, or you can think of it as a ramp, a ramp to go up. And we see this all the time. Maybe you've seen it. I have one more drawing I'm going to make, and this one uh, I'm going to leave for you to discuss with your uh, class teachers. And it looks like this. At my house, I have an upstairs, all right? And there's a stairway that goes up to it. And I had to carry some things up. I had to get those things upstairs. And I thought, okay, just kind of scratching my head wondering, hmm, hmm, how should I do this? I could get a ladder, okay, I could get a ladder and carry the box, I could carry this box up the ladder, or, so what should I do? If I wanted to have less work, should I go up the ladder, or should I go up the stairs? Which would be less work? The distance up is three meters in here. So let me ask you, which is less work? Going up the ladder or going up the stairs? Let me give you about a minute to discuss that with your class. All right, so you had a chance to decide, would the ladder be less work or the stairs be less work? And your answer is the same. It would be the same amount of work from a science standpoint. The work, it will be easy. This would be easy work going this way. This is hard going this way. But the work is the same. It's just we have to do it here longer. This would be a big D here with a small f. And this will be a small d with a big f. And if you understand that, you understand how a simple machine, like a ramp, like a wheel, like a pulley, like a wedge, like an inclined plane, like a screw, helps us make work easier. All right, what I'd like you to do is on the bottom of your worksheet, there's a section here of what did you learn so far. So I would like you to, and you can do this later, 
but I'd like you to write right now, write one sentence that you can start it with, today I discovered, finish that sentence, and then later with your class, you may want to find and search out and look for 10 simple machines found in your classroom or your school. Uh, kind of like a simple machine scavenger hunt. Uh, so let me give you some time to finish this sentence. Today I discovered. All right, I, we're ready to do our final part of this lesson, which happens to be working with a pendulum. And I have my pendulum right here, uh, which is on the string tied on here. And we're going to use gravity as our force. So when I lift this up, and I let go. We're not going to throw these at all. We're just going to lift them up, give them some potential energy, and then let them go. And gravity will take over and we'll have kinetic energy. Potential energy is stored energy. When something's moving, it has kinetic energy. And there's energy in this movement here. So we have no energy, potential energy, kinetic energy. All right? no energy, potential energy, kinetic energy. To do this part of the uh, project, you're going to need your blank sheet of paper that your teacher has for you, and your tape. And I'm going to show you, we're going to have to set these up. And this is kind of um, an interesting thing to do. So let's follow directions. Let's take your blank sheet of paper, and you have a block of wood. And this block of wood has the word, has a dot on it, and the word work, and it has the word force on it. Force, work. Remember, work is when you use a force to move an object. The object you're going to move is this block of wood. All right, so on the back, there's people's names. You can go ahead and write your name on it. But on this side is the science side. Okay? I'm going to put this in the middle of my piece of paper right about here like this and I'm going to trace it. I'm going to trace it and I'm going to put a dot right here. That's my starting dot. So it looks like this. So this piece of wood fits right here. That's your first step. So we've Got our piece of paper and our piece of wood that fit on here. It's time now to move to the floor. So I'm going to switch cameras and show you uh, using your chair what we're going to do with this. Okay, so I'm down here on the floor and you might have to move your chair around a bit so you have a little bit of room. But with this piece of paper with the dot goes right under your chair. Okay, and the wood is going to fit right here on this. So we're going to put that right on the floor under your chair. That's your first step, okay? The block of wood. And this piece of wood is going to be knocked under your chair, under your chair. So don't put it out like that. Don't put it like that. Put it so it's going to go under your chair from the front, okay? And then I'm going to tape down the piece of paper. That's why you have the tape. And you only need to tape it on the front, right here. We're going to tape that to the carpet. Okay? So now our paper stays, and our block of wood will move. So that's your second step, is to put this piece of paper underneath the chair. You can move your chair around so it's just about under, and tape it down. Share the tape. And if you want to do this in teams, that's okay, too. Or you can do it individually. Okay, this next step, we have a block of wood that fits where it says the dot goes on the dot. Move our chair around. It's time now to add our pendulum. Now, what I want to do is, and uh, look where I'm going to tape this. Do not tape it way back here. We're going to tape this on the front. And so what I want to do is, you might want to get a piece of tape ready. And what I want to do is, so this will swing. And now this is the hard part that's hard. We don't want it touching the floor, 
but we don't want it way high up here like this. We want it so that when it swings, it will hit this piece of wood like that. So you need to set this so it's not too low. That's too low. See how it does that? It bounces. And this is too high because it would miss it completely. So I'm going to tape this on the front of my chair, the very front of my chair right here. Not back here, but on the front of my chair. And I'm going to put two pieces of tape on it so it holds it in place so I can swing this pendulum using gravity. Using gravity to make it go from potential energy to kinetic energy. And I can hear it so it's touching, so I'm going to pull it up just a little bit. It's touching the paper. There we go. Go ahead and get your pendulum set so it would swing. And ideally what we're looking for is that we can move our chair around so it's just right. Move your chair after you get it set. So it's just like that. So I can lift this up, use a force to move an object, do some work. See some young scientists at work. Oh, yeah, they were using a force to move an object a distance. And we're now ready to, you fine tuned and adjusted your pendulums. Now we're ready to work on a hypothesis. And so we have a worksheet that looks like this. And these are different heights. And we're going to do five trials at different heights. And so let's just change this one to like halfway up the chair. And this one is full. So we're not going to do these today, I don't think. You can go back and do those later. But we're going to do five swings, five trials, one, two, three, four, five, at halfway up the chair, and then five at the full distance up the chair. Let me show you what I mean. So we're going to, we're going to use a force, the pendulum, to move an object, the block of wood. And that block of wood has a dot on it, and your paper has a dot on it. So when we do some work, and this block of wood moves, swing, bang, move, we can measure that distance. And we can measure that distance. That is, if we have a ruler. So let's go check it out, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here I am with my ruler, my centimeter ruler, to measure how much work I'm going to do. And I'm going to use my block of wood lined up. And I'm going to do five trials halfway up. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to do five trials all the way up. And I want to know, will there be a difference in how much work is done halfway up as opposed, as opposed to all the way up? And so just for an example, let's go halfway up. If I miss, I won't count that as a trial. Here we go, halfway up. Oh, I did some work. I used a force to move an object. I'm going to take my centimeter ruler, and right here, from dot to dot is 11 centimeters. And so, it's 11 centimeters, halfway up, 11 centimeters. Make sure you write centimeters, because that's the label, and repeat that five times. Go ahead and get started. I'll do mine. You do yours. Halfway up. Thirteen centimeters, fourteen centimeters, twelve centimeters. I need to record my results. Okay, teachers, uh, later you may want to have the students find their total and find their average. That's optional for you. And now I'm going to do it at the higher length to see how far it will go. Maybe I'm going twice as high, maybe it'll go twice as far. Let's find out. Full. Oh, look at that. 26 centimeters. 
repeat my trial again. Trial number two, full. 16 centimeters. Repeat my trial again. Line up the dot to dot. Full. Trial three. 13 centimeters. I have two more trials. Full. And that was a nice swing there. 28 centimeters of work using a force to move an object at distance. My last trial, full. 24 centimeters. Okay, hey, I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I did. We explored simple machines and forces and distance and energy, potential, kinetic, and we even had a hypothesis. If we double the height, will we get double the work? I would like you to finish this investigation and write a short few sentences of what you will learn today. I'll see you next time.